Molly Studding, and Allie Watkins. The pen name Nellie Bly was given to a revolutionary young woman, Elizabeth Jane Cochran, in 1885. She disagreed with a sexist column written about working women in the Pittsburgh Dispatch, and by writing an impressive rebuttal piece to the editor, she earned a spot as reporter for the newspaper. Nellie Bly brought attention to critically important controversies, social issues, and the hidden lives of people whose society had turned its back on. This audacious woman went to find the truth firsthand by impersonating people who needed help. Nellie Bly truly earned the title, the best reporter in the world. But it all started at a young age. This boarding work just isn't enough. Mother and I don't have enough money to live like we need to. And with the little education I have, I, I just don't know what to do. Elizabeth, I picked up the Pittsburgh Dispatch. Can you please check to see what the price of milk is at the corner market? Ah, uh, sure thing, Mother. Hmm. I don't see it listed, Mother. Well, all right, then. Will you check the price at Grove store? Uh, yes. Oh, here it is, 28 cents. Hmm, let's see what's going on today. April 17, 1885. Hmm. What's this? An article titled, What Girls Are Good For? Well... I think I'd better read this. A, a woman should go no farther than her home? A woman's work is a monstrosity? I can't believe it! Those journalists have the nerve to write a story like that in a public paper? Well, I'm going to have to give them a piece of my mind. To the editor of the Pittsburgh Dispatch, I am quite appalled that such an article was inserted into your paper. The derogatory statements about women within this article have left me irate and lied to. Women can do anything a man can do, and more. The author of this horrendous passage, Erasmus Willison, has no understanding of the plight of young women. I have spent the last four years in working class Allegheny Row houses, and I have met many, many poor young women who are so often unable to find a good job. Your series has offended many women, but this article has gone way too far. Signed, Lonely Orphan Girl. <clears throat> Signed, Lonely Orphan Girl. She'll be here in a minute. Hello, my name is George Maddock, and I'm the editor of the Pittsburgh Dispatch. I just received your letter. And may I say, well done. Uh, well, thank you, sir. I am Elizabeth Jane Cochran, and may I ask you something, sir? Why am I here? Well, Miss Cochran, when I received your letter concerning the article written by Erasmus Wilson, I was quite pleased and could tell that you were just a fiery spirit, and that your writing is just full of youthful exuberance. I would like to ask you to write a rebuttal piece for my paper on women. And who knows, if you do well, maybe I will give you the opportunity to work Full time? Thank you, sir. You won't regret this, sir. I'll get it to you as soon as I can. Nellie Bly, Nellie Bly. Oh, and Miss Cochran. Yes? As you know, this world is just full of people who despise what you're doing. But in order to change that, I must give you a pen name. Absolutely. Now, let's see. That song you were singing, Nellie Bly, by Stephen Foster. Yes, Nellie would be perfect, but brainstorm. And we're going to change the spelling. Instead of a Y, it's going to be an I-E. Thank you, sir. Nellie Bly. Hmm. Has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Nellie Bly, Nellie Bly. <laughs> Nellie began working for the dispatch right away. She started by investigating the lives of poor working girls and calling for reform on Pennsylvania's divorce laws. After almost a year of working for this paper, Nellie convinced the editors of the dispatch to allow her to be a foreign correspondent in Mexico where she started investigating the lives of people living in poverty and injustice. Not too long into her trip, she was escorted out of Mexico because the government's reaction to her request for social reform was one of disapproval. When she reached the state, when she went back to the States in 1887, her positive reputation as Stuff Girl was rapidly growing, and she decided to quit the Pittsburgh Dispatch and work for Joseph Pulitzer's New York World, where she was dared to explore Blackwell's Island Insane Asylum through the patient's eyes. But the problem was, Nellie wasn't insane. Nellie had to personify an insane person in court to be committed into the asylum. I am crazy. I'm crazy. I'm crazy. I just can't do it. Elizabeth Jane Cochran, you are a perfectly sane, respectable woman with the alter ego of Nellie Bly. 
And if you want a job in this man's world, hike up your britches, get into that courtroom, and act like a lunatic. <sighs> Deep breath. I can do this. Nellie's objective in court was to come across as insane, and she completed the task with success. Nellie would be shipped to the asylum in 1887 and spend 10 days behind bars. While there, she experienced many situations that demanded a forum. Granted butter, outdated food, and few careless doctors. Glide then took her reform ideas to many levels, stressing the need for proper medical attention, sanitation, and decent food in the asylum. When asked how she survived and acted in the asylum, she replied, I did not act. I went insane. You see, the people in this world can never imagine the length of those days in the asylum. They seem never ending. We were sent to the bathroom where there are only two coarse towels for all the patients to use. I watched as the most crazy patients with the worst eruptions all over, the, all over their faces, use the same towels as the women with fairly clean skin. After running my face and, wash, and running water, my underskirt did the duty as a towel. Next, two nurses came in with six combs, and oh, the combing! Before I knew it, my hair was then pulled and jerked, and after protesting to no avail, I decided to set my teeth and endure the pain. Nellie shared the knowledge she obtained at Blackwell's Island in San Asylum with the New York Grand Jury who granted $1 million to help improve the treatment of the mentally ill. <clears throat> October 19, 1888. Dear Diary, When I arrived at work today, I had quite an urge to do something special, something no woman has ever done before. So I proposed the idea that I would race against a fictional character, Phileas Fogg, who appeared in Around the World in 80 Days by Jules Verne. Mr. Cockerell, the head editor of the world, didn't exactly like my idea. In fact, he doubted me. But I'm going to prove to him I can do this with no chaperone. I can do this. And so she departed from New York, traveling all around the world and hitting hotspots, including England, Japan, Italy, China, San Francisco, all the way back to New York, beating Fogg's record by eight days. Newspapers all over the world were keeping the public updated with daily articles, and students were studying time charts and calendars, estimating her arrival time. They all wanted to know if the best reporter in the world could do it. January 20th, 1889. Dear Diary, I did it! I went around the world in 72 days. I was welcomed into a sea of people, to say the least. I hate to be boastful, but I am proud of myself. Over one million people entered a contest trying to guess the date and time of my arrival. I really think that women around the country are revolutionizing because they now know that they can successfully complete a male's task and compete with the men. Soon after Nellie Bly's trip around the world in 1889, she took a short break from journalism when her brother died. But the revolution of women journalists did not stop. And when Nellie went back to the New York world in 1993, 1893, Soon after, she married, she surprised everyone by marrying Robert Seaman, a multimillionaire industrialist. After stop writing for the world, I started working for my husband's company, Ironclad Manufacturing, and doing some work in the industrial field. Last year, in 1904, my husband unexpectedly passed away, leaving me with the company, and unfortunately, I went broke. But I'm now back in New York, writing for the Evening Journal, doing some more work with social issues. Before I die, I do want to do one more thing. Seeing women at their best, completing what they believe in, and achieving at their best. When Nellie did die on January 27, 1922, her revolutionary work did not, and continued to live in women all over the world. Nellie set positive reforms on countless social issues, including divorce laws, mental health, child labor, women's employment opportunities, and females in journalism. Nellie Bly's work was a forerunner to the investigative journaling done by today's reporters, Barbara Walters, Ann Curry, Katie Kirk, Lisa Ling. Nellie Bly revolutionized the way women live and work by proving they can achieve anything if they set their mind to it. She was not afraid to publicly state her opinion over many controversial issues. The reaction, which occurred in the late 19th and early 20th century, still has effect on social and economic reforms today, as women seek equal pay for equal work in our world. Nellie Bly revolutionized journalism by awakening a reaction which has led to necessary social reform. Thank you.